Welcome to the VI Department of Education's 2020-2021 Parent and Community Educational Conference. Research has shown that parental involvement is a key factor in student achievement and students' overall success in life. It is also known to be true that parents tend to participate more in their child's education when they know how and when they feel knowledgeable and equipped with the tools to do so. With this in mind, the VI Department of Education has provided professional development for parents over the years, and we are pleased to continue providing this important and necessary support. What's new at the department, however, is the professional development we are providing for the VI community. This change is due to the fact that successful school systems have strong, positive, and consistent community support. And with this goal of rebuilding the community's trust in the Virgin Islands public education system, I am delighted to bring this educational conference to you. Your participation in today's conference will help to transform our public education system. I look forward to hearing about your experience today and the areas of the VI public education system you would like to learn more about. Remember, Together, we can transform public education in the Virgin Islands. Enjoy today's session. Welcome. I am Kira Samuel, District Director of Data and Assessment for the St. Croix District at the Virgin Islands Department of Education. Presenting with me today is Mrs. Carla Smith-Tadman, System Analyst 2 in the St. Thomas St. John District, and Mr. Aubrey Danielson, System Analyst 2 in the St. Croix District. Today, we will be sharing information with you on Power School for Parents. Let's get started. What exactly is Power School? Power School is a student information system used by the Department of Education in the United States Virgin Islands, also known as VIDE. Power School's Parent Portal is an online application that provides parents, guardians, real-time access to their children's grades, assignments, attendance, schedules, school announcements, and more. Next. The URL or website address for the St. Croix District is stx.powerschool.com forward slash public. For the St. Thomas St. John District, sttj.powerschool.com forward slash public. The image shows you how it looks when you get to that site. Important notes to keep in mind. Prior to creating your account, you are required to have a valid email address and obtain an access ID and password for each child you have enrolled in public school from your children's school. So please contact your child's school and ask to speak to the counselor or the representative responsible for power school to obtain that access ID and password. Access to the Power School Parent Portal. You can access multiple students with one login. Access the portal from any computer or device in the world with internet access. And you can also assess the, access the portal via the website previously provided or the link on the Virgin Islands Department of Education VIDE website at http colon forward slash forward slash vide.vi forward slash four dash families forward slash pound parent dot portal. In order to create a parent account, you must select the create account on the top of the student and parent sign in page. The image shows you what that would look like. You are to enter in your first name, last name, your email address, 
re-enter the email address exactly as you entered it before and select a unique username that you would like to use. Enter a password and then re-enter the password exactly as you did before. Please adhere to the password requirements on the bottom of the page. In order, one slide back. In order to link students to your account, you must get that information, the access ID and password you received from the school. So the first step is to enter in your student name, your child's name, first and last name. And regardless of how you enter the name, the system will populate the name based on the access ID and password. Next step is to enter the access ID and access password given to you by your child's school. Select relationship and indicate how are you related to the child by using the appropriate association from the drop down menu. At this time, you can add any additional children if necessary. At the end, click enter. The student and parent sign in page will appear for you to log into. Next. Student and parent sign in. So in order to log into the PowerSchool parent portal, you can select your language. You can choose between English, Spanish, or French. The username, please enter in the username you just created and the password as well. The password will show up as asterisk to ensure greater security when you sign in. Navigating through the PowerSchool Parent Portal. Selecting the P at the top will allow you to be able to click to return to the PowerSchool Start page. Next. Your name will appear in the upper right-hand corner of the screen when you've signed in. Any students that you have associated with your account their first names will, assure, will show at the top of the bar. Applications for PowerSchool Learning. This is not currently accessible in our district. Next, we have the data download where you can download your students' data. Next, we have the notifications where you can access schools' notifications. And then we also have the printer where you can print friendly versions of the page you are viewing. There is also a help button where you can assess, access student and parent portal. And then lastly, we have the sign out where you're able to sign out of the portal. Once logged in, parents will see the navigation menu to the left when they log into the portal. Grades and attendance is that area where you can view current grades and attendance for the current term your child is enrolled in. The grade history as well as the attendance history is where you can view grades and attendance from previous terms. The email notification is a great place where you can set up notifications to receive notices from your school via email. So let's say you'd like information sent to you, a progress report on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, setting up the email notification is the way to go so that you're always on top of your child's grades. Teacher comments is where you can view comments teachers may have entered. Forms, you can update student demographic information. School bulletin is where you can read upcoming information the school may have posted. Very important area, which helps you to keep in line with what's happening on the school campus. Class registration, where you can register for classes and view course requests. My schedule, you can view your current child's class schedule. School information, if you need to get in touch with the school via the address or telephone numbers, it can be found there.
And lastly, the account preferences. This is the area that you can go to change your password, update any email addresses, and add any additional information to your account, including additional students. We will now go live to the St. Thomas um, portal and Mr. Danielson will take you through the site and then we will have questions and answers following this section. You're muted. Mr. Danielson, are you able to share your screen? Carla. Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, can you hear me? Okay, there is the 
search bar is hiding the ability for me to unmute. We can hear you. We can hear you. Okay. All right, great. You can all hear me. Okay. Once you enter the parent portal, the this is the screen that appears. We can't see our screen. You can't see my screen. Okay. Okay, let me minimize. One second. Okay, um, Mr. Danielson, if you're having trouble, maybe I can continue. Okay, please do. Okay. Is everyone able to see the screen in front? The parents signed in? Yes, we are. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, good day, everyone. Carlos smith Tubman from the St. Thomas District. As a parent, when you log in using a URL, this is what you see. This is a sign, the sign in screen when you already have an account. This is a create screen for anybody who's first creating an account. When you click on the create account, it's gonna give you all the details you need to put in that we went over, that Miss Simon went over with you, your first name, last name, and all the information on here. Whenever you have linking your students to your account, you can link up to seven students, okay? That's not, the, that's only the, the max amount that you can link when you're creating the account for the first time. But once you have logged in, you can add more students as necessary. So we're gonna log into the portal by putting in the username and password that you created. When you log into the main screen, this is the first thing you see. This is the homepage for the parent portal. All the students who are logged under your account is going to show up right here at the first screen, at, at the top of the screen. If you click on anyone, if you notice this is my rendition Wonder Woman, if I click on the next student, her information shows up. I click on the other student, the same thing happens and so forth. So as many students as you have, whenever you go, want to see that student information, you will click on that child's name. The first thing you see is the grades and attendance. And on the grades and attendance, it shows you the current grades for this school year. Anything you see highlighted in blue is clickable, okay? Meaning it's going to drill down and give you more information. So if I was to see that this is a teacher's this is the grade I got for my child. I can click on the grade. It's a grade. It's highlighted in blue and it's gonna take me to another screen. Now, when I go to the other screen, I get more detail. It usually gives me all the assignments and everything the student has for that, for that current term. So if I scroll down, it shows me all the assignments the dates of the assignments, the name of the assignments, the score you got. And over here on the right side, again, it's blue, it's clickable. 
is mostly comments. If I click on that, it's going to give me a little note about what, about a specific assignment, okay? So anytime you want to see more detail about that, that student and the grades they have received and the, the assignments they were given and the scores for those assignments, you would stay on that page and select any one of the grades. And if you notice, and depending on the school that you go to, you have the columns, Q1, Q2, which is quarters, the E is the exam, the S is the semesters, and the Y is the year. You have your attendance, you have your tardies. You might see a child with all these attendance and what, and you don't understand why, you don't know when. If you click on the blue on the number, it's going to show you the days and the dates that this, this child was absent. The grade history is going to show you grades from past for as long as the child has been enrolled in the district. So you have the different years that a child, and these also show you the grades that a student have received for that school year. And if you notice, they're columnized by quarters, quarters, quarter one, quarter two, you got quarter three, quarter four, and Y1. And when you're dealing with the elementary school, because the child was in the elementary school at that time, they only do four quarters. They only do Q1, two, three, four, all right? And a final grade. So all the final, the final grade is average of wrong using those four marking period grades. If you go to somewhere where the child has gone to another school, you'll notice there's some, there's more options. There's E1, because at this school, they take grades for exams. And as you scroll down, you see more. This child, this school also takes grades for semesters. And you notice these grades are not grayed out. I mean, these grades are grayed out and they're not highlighted because it's not current school year. When I come to the current school year, you see the grades, the grades oh. can be selected. Final meeting. I'm not in chat meeting. You, you, you in chat meeting. Oh. Meeting? Yeah. I got the meeting. I Hi, no, no, no. uh, can you mute, mute your um, Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's okay. Now, the next tab down is the attendance history. This shows you all the attendance the students have acquired over for the whole year. And as you scroll down, it shows you for each class. Now, if your child is an elementary student, the only attendance you should see should only be for homeroom. Whereas for the students who are going to secondary school, usually from seventh to eighth, twelfth grade, they are going to see attendance for all the classes the student has. All right. And if you scroll to the bottom of the page, it tells you exactly what those attendance codes are. 1A present in school, 2K, it's all explained on the bottom of your screen. Okay. Now over under email notifications, this is where you can tell PowerSchool how often you want to receive information on your child, attendance information, grade information. And it, and it asks you exactly how often you would like to receive these mail, the frequency. So we have the current grades and attendance. You can do a detailed assignment course for each class. You can do a detail of attendance as well. So these are all the, ch the, the choices you have and you can select them all if you don't mind getting a whole lot of emails. Make sure that the email address that you want these notification come to appears in the, um, in the email addresses. If you want more than one person to receive this email, just separate your emails with a comma and you can put in the other email address. Now you can also select how frequent you want to get this email. Like I said, you can do never, weekly, every two weeks, monthly or daily. That way you can keep abreast of your, your child and the information and the grades and the attendance on a, a regular basis. You can apply all the same settings. I can select all whatever I want and I can select it to all my students 
in this account one time. Or I can send this now if I wanted to see or test how it goes, I can click and send now and submit. Once I do that, the information is gonna to come to my email address. Now, under teacher comments, whenever a teacher has a comment, you can always find, find it over under the teacher comments. And it's usually for the marking period. You can select the term again, it's only for that specific marking period that you may want to see comments like on this one. The student fails to complete assignments. So you can see your comments for the students as you go. And you can do it for each marking period that the student has grades for. Now these comments only appear when the grades have been stored at the end of every marking period. And when I say stored, I mean what PowerSchool does is it copies the grades from the teacher's grade book and it brings it over into the PowerSchool database. And that's when you would see this information, okay? Ms. Carla? Yes, there. Excuse me. What are the different um, district codes? On are you kind of cut off? Could you repeat that? What are the district codes and the school codes for, for, the, for us to log into PowerSchool? Well, the, the district codes only apply to the parent portal app, okay? Right. And if you're okay. in St. Thomas district, it's XGBZ. That's what it is in the St. Thomas St. John district, XGBZ. Okay. If okay. you're in St. And Croix, it's supposed to be B, Q, what is it again? Um, Mr. Daniel, could you help me with that again? BPQR, I think it's BPQR for the St. Croix district. That's correct. Okay. All right, and that, that only applies when you're using the app, okay? Now, this form is kind of relevant for you guys right now. This is a new application that came in with PowerSchool. And this is for parents who may want to change addresses and so forth, and you do it electronically. And this is where you would come, but you, more information on this, is going to come at a later time. The school bulletin, this is where schools put information up about school events or anything they may want to share with the students or with the parents. Not all the schools are using it right now due to our current situation, but this is where you would normally come to find out what's happening in your schools. Sometimes some schools even post the lunch schedules and so forth, they, they post PTSA meetings. PTA meetings and so forth. So this is where you would find it. The class registration. This is where students or, or parents can see the courses or come to mm, the courses that the students may select for the upcoming school year. Now, this is not always open. The school has to be the one to open this option for you. And this is where they would come to select the classes that the student wants to take for the next school year. Okay, so this is an option that when you come, um, the counselors or anything um, of that search would see the classes that you selected for the next school year. But when that happens, the school will alert you as to when this option would be open, this feature would be open for you to inform, um, input that information. Now my schedule, this is the schedule of the classes that your students are currently enrolled in. And again, it depends on how many, the school that your child is in, whether it's elementary, middle, senior high schools, okay? You can see, this is the matrix view. I mean, the, the regular week view. They have the matrix view as well that you can see at the moment. It's just a different look at the student schedule. That's all it is, okay? The list view, which I like most really, is going to show you, it's kind of point, show you all the classes that your child also again is enrolled in. The only thing with this, it's only going to show you up to that, that term. So if you had students in a, a Q1 class or Q2, it would show here, but I want to show Q3 or Q4. It only shows you up to the classes that the students is currently enrolled in. So these are the classes your child is currently enrolled in. And um, 
once we roll over into the second semester, you will see those classes as well. Down here is the school information. This is where you can find information on your school, the phone number, or contact information that you'd find right here. So anytime you want to go to any one of your schools and you go to the account, the school information, you should see your school name and the school numbers and the school address. Okay, now this is the account preferences on the bottom here. This is where your profile is. This is where you can change your username. This is where you can change your passwords. This, the, you gotta be careful when you're changing this information. You gotta re, make sure to recall store these, this, the changes that you have here. But now with PowerSchool, uh, with the new updates, you can actually retrieve this information. And just something I'm gonna show you in a, in a second. If you click on the students tab, these are where all the students are outlined that is in your system, um, that's in your account. I'm sorry, that's on your account. These are all the students that's on your account. And this is where you add a new student. So if you notice there's four students, if I want to add a new student, I'll click on add. And this is where I would put in the information. So I'm just gonna show you how that happens. So again, you must make sure you have your what? Your access ID and access password from your child's school. I'm gonna say on the grandmother, if I click okay, it told me my changes were saved. And now I have five students, five children. And if I go up to the top, there is a new student I just added. So now I have access to all that child's information as well. So anytime you click on, then you have up to the top, this is where you wanna print. It prints a, the printer friendly, like she said, of what you see. This is where you get notifications. If there's anything to be sent here, it'll, you'll have a notification there. This is where you can download information on the student. And this one is not um, currently active. So this is basically the student, the parent portal. It's pretty um, user-friendly. And remember, everything that's there, that's blue, that's clickable, you should, be, um, you should get more information on that. So, and anytime you need any more help, this help button up on top, if you click on it, it's going to give you a whole world of information, okay? And this is where you can find information and email notification, review class information. You just go here and click any one of the blue, like I said, it's clickable and give you more information. If you want to search for something specific, you will just click it up in the, Type it up in the, the, search bar, the search bar and you click on, and it's gonna narrow it down, you search down to all the different results that you can select. Okay. So at this point now, I'll be logging out. And um, I'm sharing my screen. So at this point now, we can go back to Ms. Um, Ms. Graham. I see we have some questions.
So if anybody have any questions, anything they didn't understand, no, we are open to hear anything. Good afternoon, Ms. Carla. Um, so we have Hi. to wait for tomorrow to get the um, login and password because I mean, it's been over a year and my son has now moved from elementary school to uh, middle school. And um, so I know that it's gonna have a whole, is it gonna be a different login and password? Because I don't even remember half of anything. No, uh, well, actually it's the same username and password. And um, Ms. Graham, if you allow me to share the screen one more time, please. I've, I neglected to go over one point. Thank you. <clears throat> On the home screen, on the login screen, down here where you say forget username or password. When you click on that, that's something that's operational now. If you know the username that you use that's associated with your child's account and the email address, you will put it right in here. If you don't remember the username, you can click on username and put in the email address. And what happens at this point is when you put that information in, and the email address and you enter, you get an email from PowerSchool within about less than five minutes, probably a couple of minutes with instructions on how to reset your password or recover your username and password, okay? So if you remember the password, I mean the username, you can fill this out. But if you only remember just the email address, you can click on the parent um, forget username and you can recover it that way as well, okay? So do we this dot that powerschool.com slash p that to get to that how do we get to this signing screen because you were using a test screen all along yes i was but oh you came in late then it's yes i the did, it, I did. Oh, okay. i just had to look at his i just looked at his email to see that there was a meeting because yeah, i was I'm in a sorry. <laughs> okay there is a um url i'm going to stop sharing and maybe miss Graham can take us back to the first or second screen of the PowerPoint. Ms. Graham, can you do that, please? Well, she could have just put it in the chat, just copy and paste it into the chat. Yeah, okay, you know what? Let me do that. Let me do that. Okay, that's the St. Thomas. Oh, wait, one second. I just realized I have one person selected. Let me send it to everyone. Okay, that's St. Thomas and St. Croix. It's in the chat. Any other questions? Okay, so that means everybody fully understand and should have no trouble logging in, create an account and perusing your child's information. I have a question, Carla. What do yeah. parents do when they get locked out of the portal? Well, what happens at the district office, the district, which I do over here, is I'm constantly unlocking parents' accounts. And that's a daily, that's a daily process for me, okay? Because if the parent account is locked, they won't be able to recover their username or their passwords, all right? And what locks a parent accounts is when they try numerous times to log in with the wrong information. I'm not sure exactly how many login I have it set to, at least in this district. So that's what happens, but that's a normal process for us over here. We normally unlock the, unlock the accounts. It's supposed to be done on a daily basis. There is a question. Um in the chat that says, is kindergarten and pre-K a part of power school 
in terms of um, having access to report cards? Yes, the um, the pre-K pre and well, pre-K just started for our district this school year, and I think they've been giving out like progress report. But kindergarten, kindergartners does do have report cards that goes out every marking period. It's not the same as the other grade levels because they use standards. So the report card is based on standards, but yes, they do have a report card. Can the kindergarten and the pre-K students, um, as for example, can the parents see the pre-K or kindergarten report card on the parent portal? You don't, see, nobody sees a report card on the parent portal. They just see grades and yes. I have it. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Okay, as the previous person asked a question about being locked out uh -huh. the account, are we able to do another account with another email? Or would it deny us being of the child's name that we're using again? Well, I try to dissuade people from having more than one account because um, everything can fall under and it can cause a lot of confusion, not only for yourself, but also for the staff at the schools. So if you do get locked out, um, like I said, we try to unlock those accounts every day or every couple of days at least. So if you have a problem with your account not being um, unlocked, you can always call the school or send an email. Let me put it that way, send an email to the school because right now with the current situation, the telephone is not really the way to go. But you can send an email to the school, tell them their accounts are locked, or you can even send it to the district office or even to me. I really. Carla, is it possible that you could tell them when the parent portal is locked to parents and why? What are you doing in St. Croix District right now? Is it the same as we? Well, in St. It Thomas, is the same as you guys. In the St. Thomas District, we do lock. Well, I don't lock the grade book. I mean, the parent portal anymore. What I do is disable certain features like grades, GPAs, final grades, um, stuff like that. But attendance and so forth stays current. And the reason for that is at the end of each marking period, the teachers are working and getting the grades in the system. Okay, and a lot of times the grades are constantly changing. I mean, you might see, you might go in and see a grade of a 70 today, and then 10 minutes later, you go in and see a grade of a 94. Another 10 minutes later, you see, you go in and see a grade of even less. It, it shelters you from the confusion, okay, until the teachers are completely finished with their grading. Not only with the grading and the report cards are disseminated, because up until when the report cards are disseminated, teachers are still making changes to grades. So that's the reason why we disable those features, all right? It's to save you and to save the teachers because a lot of times when a parent see a grade for the student they didn't think the child should have gotten, parents are getting calls like crazy. I mean, I'm sorry, teachers are getting calls all the time. And the teachers are constantly telling, well, this is not all the grades because like, again, it saves the teachers, it saves the parents. Ms. Um, Todman, I have a few questions coming in on Facebook. Okay. Um, someone asked, how can I add another child in a different school? It doesn't matter what school the child in, they're all under the same district, all under the same SIS. So when you add, just like how I just demonstrated adding a student, it doesn't matter what school that child in once they're within the same district, whichever public school. So if you notice on, when I have my screen up, I have like four or five different students or children, and they are all at different schools. And perhaps, Ms. Todman, um, that what we're showing here is only for students enrolled in the public school system, correct? It's not like That's you can add a child in private school into this portal. That's correct. In the St. Thomas, St. John public school system. And St. Croix as well. Um, there's another question coming in from Facebook. How often would this information be updated for the parents to view um, information such as grades, attendance, etc.? 
it's life, it's live data. So if a, if a teacher marked your child absent this second, this you log in in two seconds, you will see that attendance. It is live data, live updates. Okay. Um, I just, uh, Janelle Hendricks there on Facebook, you're asking if we can review how to update the parent contact information. Janelle, this, this um, video will be on our Facebook page when we're done. So you can always rewind and, and um, take your time and review right there on Facebook. So that'll be available immediately. Ms. Samuel, for parents that have multiple children with different, um, one of the parents may be different or two of them, what is the policy in regards to access being given? Do they all share the same password or account or are multiple accounts given? Um, multiple accounts can be given um, once the parent's information is within the student information system. They are the legal guardian for the, for the child. Then the school is able to give out that access ID and password to the parent, whether it be a father or a mother, and each individual can create a separate account for that child. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Here's another question coming in on Facebook. James is asking, James is asking, when creating a PowerSchool account, adding a student, when creating a PowerSchool account, adding a student, it's asking for the student's access code and password. Where do I find the access code and the password? they would contact their child's school for that information. No, contacting the child's school for and that how information. How do you contact the school? Isn't just a get, you won't just get that information like that. It's a legal process when you're trying right. to get that information for your student, for your child, okay? You have to show picture ID of who you are. You have to prove who you are and you have to be the parent or guardian on file for that child in power school before the school gives you that information. Any other questions? Guys, will the recording be um, shared with us? at a later date so that we can probably review it should we have any questions or can you cite, um, share your slides with us? Hi there, yes, um, all of these recordings will be available on the VIDE website. Um, we're working on getting them uploaded um, hopefully by end of next week or, so they, yes, the parents and uh, the community will be made aware as to where and when um, they are, they'll be available. But again, they, this recording would be right there on our Facebook page immediately after we have concluded this live session. So it'll be available right away on Facebook. On, on what, DOE, um, USDI? Yes. yes, Virgin Islands Department of Education on our Facebook page. So we are live on Facebook. And as soon as we wrap this session, the recorded session um, comes up there on Facebook, Virgin Islands Department of Education. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. We appreciate you ladies. But yeah. all the hard work you're doing for us because right now I am just so frustrated with my son. Trust me, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> You're very welcome, Ms. Uh, Ms. Simon, Joseph Simon. I have a few other questions um, coming in on Facebook. I'll read out. Uh, do parents 
see comments attached to daily attendance? This is from Felicia. Do parents see comments attached to daily attendance? No, the comments are not attached to the attendance because it's really an end of term information, but they do, teachers do have the option to put comments on the assignments. So the teachers can do that. So it's not tagged to the, the attendance, but it can be tagged to the assignment. Okay, thank you for that. Um, there's another question here on Facebook. Uh, it says, are teachers required to update attendance on power school daily? Yes, they are. <laughs> okay, and I have another question on Facebook uh, from Jessica. How would we provide that to the school with the soft government closure? Um, Jessica, I am not sure what you mean by that. Could you, could you advise, could you clarify that on Facebook? And then we'll be able to ask that question a little clearer. I'd also like to mention that when it comes to the grades as well, at least in the St. Thomas St. John district, teachers are obligated when they give an assignment to a student and collect it to grade that assignment within five days. Now, if you know your child has an assignment and it's been over the five days, you can contact the school's principal, okay? And see what, and find out what's going on because they really are obligated. I do understand the teachers are also overworked, you know, but um, give it another day or so, like even after five, six days or so, but they said they, are, they should have those assignments graded within five days after they receive them back. Kira, that's the same, Ms. Samuel, that's the same in the St. Croix district? Yes, that is correct. Okay, great. Um, okay, got... I, was ahead, just gonna, I was just gonna say that in the quick lookup, if you remember when Carla was showing you the quick lookup, if you click on the teacher's name, you will see the teacher's email address. So if you wanted to send an email to the teacher of your child, you can. Okay, great. Um, before we co come to you, uh, Ms. Simon, we have a couple other questions on Facebook. Jessica is saying, would the proof of parent be provided electronically since we aren't allowed in the school? Um, that was, I, okay, she's clarifying her previous question. So she's saying, um, would the proof of parent be provided electronically um, since, they aren't, since parents are not allowed in schools right now? Uh, she's talking about the fact that you'd mentioned that ID must be provided before the school can turn over any information um, to the parent who requests. Well, we did try that in the St. Thomas St. John district a few months ago, but um, a lot of things kind of went wrong with that. And the schools are accepting people to come in and do the um, sign up for parent portal accounts. So if you go to a school, most more than likely every school basically at least in this district are open and you can go in and request and sign up for the parent portal account same is true for the saint croix district all principals usually are at the campuses along with um power school personnel so please you can just hop on over to the school with your id and information and they will check in the system and they'll be happy to get that information to you um will you need your parents to do that Yes. Well, the parent or guardian, or and it guardian. has to be the person on file. You have to be on file in power school. If you're not, what, what's going to happen is, uh, I'm sorry, I got something going on here. But what has to happen is the parent can share that information with you if they want you to have access to their child's information. Okay, great. Um, I'm not seeing any additional questions on Facebook. There I'm was a quest, excuse me, there was just a question in which uh, parent asked that the schools were open. And I think you did say that earlier that um, 
if they go to the schools, um, there's, there's a certain time that they went, um, personnel are at the school in the event, um, monitors are always in the school can, they can give you email addresses to contact staff as well. But usually there is some people in the main office. They may not be there exactly every day of the week, but um, at various days, there is definitely school personnel in the main office. And when you do go, what happens is they're gonna give you the form, the parent portal letter, um, information. They're gonna have you sign once they have collected the information from you, your, your ID and so forth, you're going to sign a parent portal agreement. Okay, and once you sign a parent portal agreement, then they're gonna give you a parent access letter. Great, Ms. Joseph Simon, you can uh, proceed with your question. Okay, um, my question is, my, <clears throat> my son was given an intervention class, which um, has never been available to him. Um, he's logged into it and it's never available and which I, it's supposed to be, I guess, his homeroom class which is after um, the end of the school day, most of the time, but it's never open. And that portal, um, that teacher has never let him into that class. And I need to find out if that's active or not. Or how do I find out if that's active or not? Um, Ms. Carla, your, your mic is muted. Your mic is muted. I'm sorry. No, I was saying that's a school issue. You will, you will probably have to get in touch with the principal or his counselor. That's on the secondary level. Is it? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. You'll have to get in touch with the principal or his counselor, okay? Okay. Carla, one of the parents just asked, how do you get an unexcused absent change to an excuse? You're mute. Once, once they, they present whatever documents or notes from the doctor and so forth, they got to take it to the school. The school is going to be the one to excuse it. I know they can't, if they can't get to the school, they can make contact with the school, even if it's the attendance counselor or the principal, and they can change that um, attendance code back to present. Or not even present, the child was absent. Yes, the child was marked as absent, uh, as an unexcused absent. Okay, yeah, that can be changed at the school. Uh, is there a set amount of absences that could change a grade? 10 absences is really chronic, okay? That's when Department of Social I mean, human services and so forth should be contacted. But at the schools, they should be monitoring the attendance rate of the students, even when they get up to four or five, they know that's something they need to monitor. So it really shouldn't get that far. But um, whereas it comes to grade, there is a certain amount of grades, I mean, absences that can affect a student's grade, unfortunately, and I, I don't know if it's a fortunate or unfortunate thing, the teachers don't really adhere to it. A lot of teachers in the districts do not adhere to it. A uh, parent was just asking, what does the agreement for the parent portal entail? Well, it's a whole bunch, it's a bunch of bulleted items. Um, uh, I have one I can probably show, but it's a bunch of bulleted items that's, that's pertains to the usage of the portal, not sharing the information, know that you're liable for it. And so, you know, things of that nature. But like I said, it is a legal process. And because it's a legal process, you do have to sign the agreement. Okay, uh, for some for parents uh, that are just joining us, 
um, Ms. Samuel or Ms. Todman, either of you, if you could just give a brief recap of what the parent portal is. And um, I think you just addressed the agreement. Why do, you, why do you need an agreement? But just a brief recap of what the parent portal is for parents who might just be joining us. You can go ahead, Tara. The parent portal is the online portion of our Power School student information system where parents can log on and get val valid information about their child's progress in terms of grades, attendance, school bulletins, etc. So in the chat, we have um, placed both of the URLs, both for the St. Thomas and St. Croix district. And what you would need is to contact, be able to contact your child's school to get the access ID and access password for your child's account so that you can create one. However, like Ms. Carla said, you do need to have a valid identification and you also have to be the person on file as the child's parent or legal guardian before that access is granted to you. Any other questions or concerns? Yeah, Carla, could you briefly explain why at times we do lock the parent portal? Uh, explain it again. Oh, you did explain it earlier? <laughs> yes, she did. Okay, all right, no problem. Well, if there are no further questions or concerns, we would like to thank you for attending the VIDES 2020-2021 Parent and Community Professional Development Conference with a goal to improve the programs and services at the VIDE that are specific to you. Your participation and feedback in this presentation are invaluable. Happy holidays from the VIDE. We hope to see you again in attendance at future conferences. Good day, parents. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you found the information valuable to understanding the VIDE's functions and beneficial to your ease of engagement with the Department of Education. You may access this information anytime by visiting vide.vi and clicking on the For Families tab. Thank you.